Hi, Tom Dunn here on January 30th, 2018. Today, I'm just going to do a quick look at using the Victron Connect app on my smartphone to communicate with my Victron Energy Smart Solar 7515 solar charge controller. I can't hook a solar panel up to it today because we're in the middle of a snowstorm and there's no sun. So I'm just going to be looking at what the different options are in the different menus. So let's get started. All right, I've connected the charge controller to a battery so it's turned on and now we're going to connect the phone up to it. So, there's the Victron Connect app. And it doesn't like it right now. Well, don't know what that was, but it's working fine now. Well, here's the display that you come up with initially. You've got your solar output, which is currently zero watts because there's nothing connected. And solar voltage, which is essentially zero because again, there's nothing connected. Here's the battery voltage, 13.31 volts because I just took this battery off the charger. And no current going in or out of the battery. I don't have any load connected to the charger, so that's, and it's turned off and there's no current. So you can use this to get a snapshot of what the current situation is with your charger and your batteries at any time, just with your phone via Bluetooth. You can also look back in time for up to 30 days. Now I have not had this connected uh, except to test it so I don't have any history yet, but you can find out what was going on. When I was testing it, I had a maximum output of uh, 15 watts and voltage of 22.33 and my battery got up to 14.78 and basically you can see that here. You can also see the total kilowatts that you've put in and this will, as I said, go back to 30 days of history. Now if I wanted to change the settings on the controller, I push this little symbol up here and I go into the settings mode. I can change the battery settings, load output settings, street light settings, which is just a variation on load output, and then some communication settings for the hardwired communications port on the controller. For most of us, the only thing of interest really is going to be battery and load output. Let's take a look at load output first. Come on, finger. Okay, you can, I've got it set to always off because I don't use it. That way the terminals won't be energized and I don't run any risk of short circuits. However, you have a bunch of options, a battery life algorithm and a number of other algorithms that you can use. But I will stick personally for my application with always off. So we can come out of there. Let's look at battery. Have a number of options for the battery. Battery voltage. Well the system auto detects battery voltage the first time you turn it on with a battery and it's detected properly that I have a 12 volt battery here. You can change it to 24 volt if you have a 24 volt system, which doesn't, yeah, down here, 24, but I only have a 12, so we'll leave it there. And this maximum charge select is currently set at the maximum output of the controller. If you had a small battery bank on here, for example, the battery I've been playing with is just out of my lawn tractor. It's about a 30 amp hour battery. I'd probably, for safety, want to set that down to no more than about 3 or 4 amps. It's easy to do. Just touch it and then you can use the plus and minus keys to change it. 
and then we've got charger enabled right now it's turned off because I have no charge coming in one thing about this system is that the first time you connect it it will not turn on charging until the input voltage from your solar panels is at least 5 volts above the battery voltage. So if, for example, you hooked it up early in the morning when your solar panel, a 12 volt panel, was only putting out 15 volts and you had a 12 volt battery in there, it wouldn't turn on charging until you got enough sunlight to um, go over 17 volts. However, once you've connected it to a battery and it's turned on the first time, it only requires one volt over battery voltage to turn on. So that after the first time you connect it to the battery, it should turn on without any problems, even early in the morning. Now, the next thing you've got is charge settings. And you can use the factory default, which is shown here, 14.4, 6 hour maximum absorption time, and 13.8 float voltage. You can go in, push this, and go to user defined, and then by touching any one of these, you can change them. For example, if I wanted to set my float voltage to 13.6, just touch it there, take it down to 13.6 and it's reset. You're also under presets a number of different battery types. You can see AGM, uh, different gel batteries, lithium batteries, and etc. So we'll leave that to user defined for now. Actually, I'll turn it back to uh, factory default, and it goes back to 14.4 and 13.8. Okay, and we can go back to the settings mode. We don't need to worry about these other settings. Among these other options, basically load output and battery are the only things most of us are going to use, unless you want to run a light that comes on when the sun goes down and then goes off automatically at sunrise and then you can use this street light function. So basically with this app you can not only monitor your battery at any time you're within Bluetooth range of the charge controller but you can look back over the last 30 days of charging to see what's been going on and how well the system has been doing and you can also go in and program specific charging uh, profiles for different types of batteries. And one big advantage of this charge controller is that you can use it to charge lithium iron phosphate batteries. All right, that uh, wraps up what I wanted to show you, that there's a lot of flexibility in this Victron Connect app to talk to a Victron Smart Solar Charge Controller. And it's easy to use. I'm not very skilled with it yet, but it's easy to use and has a lot of functionality. And not the least of which is that you can change all of your charging parameters to customize it for the specific batteries that you have. Okay, thanks a lot for watching. Please give me a thumbs up if you liked it. And if you like, subscribe to get uh, notifications of when my next video comes up, and I look forward to talking to you again.